Shout, shout out with your song. Cry with the wind, for the dawn is breaking. March, march, swing you along. Why goes our land home is waking? Firm in reliance, love and defiance. Love in hope, for sure is the end. March, march, many as one. Shoulder to shoulder and friend to friend. Officer for the Gorton Division of Manchester, I hereby declare that the number of votes cast for each candidate in the parliamentary election on July the 13th, 1895, was as follows. Hutch, Conservative, 5,865. <laughs> Independent Labour Party, 4,261. <laughs> and that the undermentioned person has been duly elected to serve for this constituency, John Hutch. <laughs> Socialism will triumph in the end. Sylvia, don't disgrace the family. my friends, we have nothing to fear. The great natural agents of the land, coal, iron and minerals generally, together with the land itself, shall no longer be the property of one class, to the detriment of the community, but shall be brought under the control of the whole people, with a just regard to the rights of the individual on the one hand, and of the nation on the other. And thus the whole nation, in the individual, 
and in the mass, sustained by the justice of the law and the equity of the social system, shall move steadily forward to a developing prosperity in peace. And that, my friends, is socialism. The policy, in a few words, of our new independent Labour Party. Has any of you any questions? Anything you would like to ask? I'm here to answer questions. Are you a doctor? Yes, sir, but not a doctor of medicine. I'm a doctor of law. In fact, a lawyer. It says here, doctor. Yes, sir. I graduated as a doctor of law with the gold medal of London University in 1863. Oh, I... Come on. Are there any more questions? Come, ladies, these are matters that affect you all. Your mother's waiting. Yes, father. Rather a small meeting, considering the weather. I often think it makes no difference here. So I close my eyes to listen to you and see the garden. <laughs> oh, please, not like that. I feel you're pushing me. Miss Woody, where? I was attacked. My love, what are you telling us? Attacked by drunken idiots in Gorton. They threw bottles at me. Mother. Well, you injured fools. No, no, no. Come on, get in. Makes my blood boil to think that ignorant brutes like that are considered fit to vote and I'm not. We'll change all that colour. Such fools. Walk on, boy. Come on. There's my mother. Come on. You were safe on that bed. Of course. Your mother was attacked. Oh, well, yes, by some drunken oafs in Gorton. They threw bottles at me. <laughs> you look beautiful, darling. Don't you look beautiful? The lovely Lady Christabel. Of course. <laughs> Taking me to Geneva. We're visiting a school friend of hers. They haven't met for ages. How long will you be gone? Oh, Lord knows. Depends how long I want to stay. I don't mind, really. Make a change from politics and silly old women's suffrage. You don't mean that. What? Politics are important. You know they are. Oh, Lord, yes, ever so. <laughs> they are, they are. I'm bored, that's all. There isn't any more. It's all gone. And you must go to bed. Mom! But you haven't kissed me. Oh, what a bully you are. Hello, Adler. Has Tom taken the pony back to Blakely's? He knows I wanted to go. Tom, wait for me. Did you have a good day? When will supper be? It's well, almost ready. Okay. Well, Madam said 8.30 with I, you being out. They give you to eat. I'll serve it for you. Oh, oh, yes. oh, you don't like that, do you? I tell Thank you, you Adler. Now you must get better. Look, you disarranged my hair. Look at me. Sylvia, so take him upstairs, will you? He's quite worn me out. Come on. <sighs> Mr. Lupton says I need glasses. I can't see the board. Glasses? Whatever for? He says my eyes are weak. Then you must make them strong. Glasses will make them weaker. Never heard such nonsense. Yes, Mother. Hello, Mr. Lupton. Harry, can't you really see the board? I suppose I can. I try. Oh, Harry, I don't know what you mean. I never do. Look. Father and mother. Hmm. Yes. Did they really attack her? Those men in Gorton? Yes. She's jolly brave. 
I think she's wonderful. She is wonderful. Of course. They both are. Come on. I'm so glad Christabel is coming with me. I need to talk to her alone. I'm sure we're right. She ought to be a dancer. Richard? Yes, my love. But she needs me to push her on. She's so... Oh, I don't know. I can't think of an emotion. But so unpositive. She'll never make a go of anything unless I make her. And it would be so good for her to travel the world. A prima ballerina. We go to Paris, Rome, Florence, even America. But a dancer needs someone to arrange things for her. Do you think I could do that? I'm sure you could, my love. After all, you arrange me. <laughs> What's that you're reading? Only a brief, one I dislike intensely. Manchester Corporation are retaining me. Some financial irregularities by the indoor superintendent of the cleansing department. Norbury Williams is very keen on nasty business. The corporation. They use you, all of them, and you're not well. Well enough. I hate them. No, don't pick it up. I want to tell you something, something that happened to me today. You know Mrs. Sale? She's on the board of guardians with me, a splendid woman. Well, today we visited the Chalton Workhouse Hospital and we saw the children's ward. Now, can you believe this? Those little mites are almost naked. They have no night dresses at all, nothing except those awful cotton frocks with low necks and short sleeves. Well, anyway, there we saw them in this long, drafty corridor, scrubbing the floor on their hands and knees. And that's how I noticed it. You noticed what, my love? They had no drawers, no underwear of any kind. Mrs. Sale and I were astonished. So I went to the matron and asked her why. And do you know what she said? No, my love, you'll have to tell me. Well, she said she knew the situation very well, but there was nothing she could do about it. What would I tell the board, Mrs. Pankhurst? It's not a subject I'd care to mention. They are gentlemen, you know. And, well, I mean, drawers. <laughs> oh, no, it's not funny. Those little mites were shivering. My dear, in June. Well, if they weren't, they soon will be. Except that Mrs. Sale and I have arranged for them to be properly clothed. I went to Mannering myself at once and told him his neglect of detail is absolutely shocking. And what did he say? Well, he said it takes a woman to notice things like that. And so it does. Oh, I'll never be ready to go away. Geneva in July, will it be very hot? One never knows what to pack. And knowing he was always so beautifully dressed. Well, her father was the Marquis de rochefort luque Of course, he never used the title of being a communist. You're taking your peppermint again, have you? Your pain. Pack what you want, my love, but come home soon. You need me so much. It's impossible for me to live without you. Nonsense. You managed very well for 40 years before we even met. I'm quite sure your mother spoiled you just as much as I do now. When you come back, we'll have a second honeymoon. It won't be long. Everything will be all right. Yes, certainly. No, I will. Oh, Ellen, do I have my hat box? Yes, Mum, it's on the top. Oh, you must God, write tell me everything. Oh, I'm so hopeless at it. But you must. I want to know about the lake. Describe the colours. All right, I'll try. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, my dear. Don't work too hard. You promise. I'll try. Goodbye, Mother. Come home soon. Mm -hmm. So of your dying and look after Father. I will. Goodbye. 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 some plates. I'll fetch the cream. I skimmed it off this morning. Uh, Sylvia? Yes, Father? Oh, nothing. I, uh, I shan't wait. Thank Ellen for me. There's something I, um, excuse me. Serve the children. Let them all for us. Must be jolly busy. I expect he wants us to leave some for him. I'll ask. Oh, Ellen. 
Would you give the children their strawberries? I'm just going to see to father. Yes, Miss Sylvia. Fidgets. No wonder he gets his pain. Father. With a hot water bottle. That's what Mother always does. Please, you must go to bed. Yes. To bed. I'll get the doctor. said you'd soon be better. Sylvia. Yes, I'm here. Where? Your mother. Don't you remember? Of course. No. Wharton if Mother should come. He said it wasn't necessary. Is the pain better? Is there anything you want? Sylvia. Miss Woody Way. No. There's nothing... Dreaming. Green haze. Our house. Remember. You wave me off each morning from the little window. Drudge and drill. Drudge and drill. To do, to be. doesn't count. It's what you do for others. You must rest now, please. I'll sleep. Have you watched all night? Go to bed. The doctor will be coming. Go to bed. All right. We'll call if there's anything you want. Mm. I'm glad you're better. Dreaming. Green haze. Our house. Remember.
Sylvia. My friends, we will build the future city most beautiful to see. Where women walk in public processions in the street, the same as the men. Where they enter the public assembly and take places, the same as the men. Where the city of the faithfulest friends stands, where the city of the cleanliness of the sexes stands, where the city of the healthiest fathers stands, where the city of the best-bodied mothers stands, there the great city stands. The words of the American poet Walt Whitman. The toad, ugly and venomous, wears yet a precious jewel in his head. Ugly and beautiful. Ugly and beautiful. I love you. I believe a leaf of grass is no less than the journey work of the stars. And the tree toad is a chef d'oeuvre for the highest. Christabel? Are you awake? Which would you rather be? Boy or girl? Girl, of course. Why? Boys are awful. Remember what Mother told us about babies? She said the boys are the seed and girls are the flower. Who wants to be a seed? Flowers are beautiful. It isn't fair to be a flower and ugly. Do you love ugly things? Do you love me? You're not. That's silly. Yes, I am. I'm hideous. I hate myself. I'm hideous like a toad. You are a bit. Perhaps the prince will kiss you and you'll be changed. <laughs> Rotter. Who wants kissing anyway and have rotten babies? I want babies. Whatever for. Anyway, she loves you more. I won't. I won't. Sylvia, <laughs> what are you doing? Ah, I see. Porridge again. It's not really the porridge. That's not the problem. You want to win. Why should you eat it because she says you must? That's the real problem. It's horrible with lumps. <laughs> but the biggest lump you have to swallow is your own pride. That's true, isn't it? You see? Why should I eat it if I don't want to? Because you don't. Every time we do something we don't want, it makes us stronger. You think you prove yourself when you defy your mother, but you don't. You prove your real strength when you deny yourself. The world is waiting for you. All those hungry, weak and deprived. They need your strength. Make yourself strong to serve them. It isn't easy. Sometimes it's very difficult. More difficult than eating porridge. I'm sorry. <laughs> then it's all over. What does porridge matter? As long as you understand and remember. Miss Woody Way. Will you be worth the upbringing? Love and serve them. That's all that matters in the end. Miss Sylvia! Miss Sylvia, come quick! What is it? What is it? I don't believe it. Why? 
did he run? He was sleeping and then he turned his head and I came to call you. It's a good job you sent that telegram. Your mother will be here. So that Dr. Wharton, what I couldn't do to him, he ought to be murdered. No, don't say such things. He wouldn't want that. I should have sent for her before. I didn't realize. Ellen, I want her now. When will she come? It's from Sylvia. They want me to come home. Father's ill. Father. I'll come with you. No. No, Christopher. I'll send for you if it's necessary. I want you to stay here with knowing me. Father, no, that's... please, Christopher. It's important for your education. Oh, come on. May not be so bad. Once I get there. Ellen, it's a cab. Ellen is stopping. It is her. She's here. Oh, Ellen, how am I going to tell her that he's... Oh, Miss Sylvia, you're lost. I know. Oh, Mum, thank heaven. Ellen, would you ask Tom to bring in the luggage? And I haven't paid the driver. Yes. I've been waiting. I've got to tell you. It was two days. Shh. I know. I read it in the paper. The paper? The evening newspaper. I read it on the train. There were people in the compartment with me. They were very kind. I didn't send for you. Not till Monday. I should have known. I should have known. My poor Sylvia. Oh, I wanted you to come. I did. But it would worry you. And you made it so when anyone said, I know, I know. Why didn't Dr. Warden tell me? He didn't tell me. Only afterwards when he was dead. And I was here with him alone. Can you ever forgive me? I shan't forgive myself, ever. There's nothing to forgive. No, we must go on, that's all. We must go on. Yes. Oh, my little ones. At Harry, how long have you been there? I didn't see you. Oh, have you been brave? You must. Yes, you have, haven't you? Glad you've come. It's my birthday.
should have said to him, I need him. Oh, and I'm so bad with money. I'll do the housekeeping. I did, all the time you were away, and never overspent. What? I want to be of use to you. Please. Sleep in this room alone now. We'll have to sell this house. We can't afford it. Please, Brad. Yes, all right, I will sleep now. But stay. Of course I'll stay. I won't leave you ever. We'll manage things together. Sixty-two Nelson Street, Miss. That's what you said. It's not your home, then. Seems it is. Now. going out to work. If you can get some. It's only casual labour. There are a lot of debts to settle after father's death. You're going to find things changed. Oh, Lord. Isn't life beastly? Don't you mean death? I suppose that's meant to make me guilty because I wasn't here when father died. That wasn't your fault. You don't like people being ill. You never did. You know something else that's changed while I've been away? Me. I've been looking at us, this family from the outside, and I came to a conclusion. I think we're dull. Serious? Yes. Well intentioned, yes. Even quite well informed. Oh, Christopher. But awfully dull. Like. Remember that fearful porridge Mother used to make us eat? Well, that's us. Cold, lumpy, but good for you. Tasteless and terribly dull. Grey pancas porridge. No wonder I was bored. See now why you stayed away so long. Don't say you missed me. I thought Mother would. I think she did at first. Of course, being busy makes her happy. There's been a lot to do. You know she wants you to help her run the shop. Well, that's the worst of it. Couldn't you stop her? She's tried all that before, selling artistic wares, knick-knacks, rubbish. Emerson and Company. It was never any good. It never will be. And with all her cleverness, there must be something she can do better than that. It's what she wanted. She had to give up the Board of Guardians. They found a post for her as Registrar of Births and Deaths, but it's not enough. I can't do much to help. At least I'm being trained. The School of Art saw my work and granted me a studentship, so it costs us nothing. Christabel, you must do something. Oh, if you don't do something for other people, you won't be worth the upbringing. What father said was true. Mother believes that. Perhaps you didn't know. 
The Labour Party offered to raise money for us, and she refused. Would you have lived on that? You mean charity? Of course not. And I know all about their wretched money. Mother wrote and asked me if they should use it to put up a memorial hall, and I told her I approved. After all, I'm as proud of father as anyone. Prouder, quite possibly. It wasn't pride. He tried to teach us. <laughs> oh, oh, where can I put these down? I had to get a candle so I'd have been here. Oh, <laughs> Oh, are you sorry to be home? Isn't it terrible? I always said I wouldn't live in a terrorist house, and here we are. <laughs> Madame Rochefort Luque sent you her love. Oh, no, me. Oh, let me look at you properly. Oh, you look wonderful. There's something different. Paint on your eyebrows. Oh, darling, why should you? And you're so young, and I'm so old and tired. <laughs> what nonsense. Oh, I am. And you've grown up. Were there no young men in Geneva? I was convinced every one of them would offer you his hand. I refused them all. Miserable creatures. With a wave of your hand. Of course. Oh, it's <laughs> very wonderful to have you home. So many fearful things have happened, but now even the sun has come out, and I swear it's rained in Manchester every single day. Sylvia, won't everything be wonderful now that Christopher's home? Of course. Now, I'll take these things upstairs and get some tea. Oh, are the children home from school yet? Now, don't find out. Now, come on, I want to hear all about it. What are you doing here? Why aren't you in school? I was coming home from college and I saw you. What are you doing here? Tell me. I don't want to go. Not anymore. It's the boys at school, some of them. What? They hit me, so I don't want to go. Not anymore. You've been playing truant? For how long? How long have you been doing this? About two weeks. There's a stick about I caught one in my hands. Why did they do that? Because I said I was against the war. I said South Africa belonged to the Boers as much as us. I said we shouldn't fight them. That's why they beat you? Harry, you should have told us. Nobody listens. Not anymore. Come on, come home. You can talk to me, I'll listen. We're more sort of alone. I mean, since father. Yes. You and me. I don't know. I know. It's a William Morris style, Mrs. Highland. Mrs. Pankhurst covered these herself. She's very much attached to Morris. It's for my sofa, but I'm not sure if it's blue or if it's green. A sort of greeny blue, wouldn't you say? Isn't that Christabel in there? Oh, she's very busy. She's not to be disturbed. Yes, I can see. Ah, Emmeline, there you are. Oh. I want you to tell me about this cushion. Beautiful. I have some myself. Worth every penny. Yes, but my sofa is blue. Now, I'm not sure if that's blue or if it's green. Blue. Peacock blue. Ah, that's all right, then. I'll take all three. What do you think about the election? I see that friend of your poor husband's has got in for Martha. The one with the cloth cap. Kia hearty. Mm. Rose, I shall kiss you. There. That's for being the bearer of good news. Well, oh. I'm sure I'll not approve it. I'm still a liberal. I never could understand why that husband of yours deserted the old cause. And that hardy... He's not a gentleman. He even made aspersions against the royal family. He's a good man, Rose. I know. I've worked with him. Oh, excuse me, will you? I must tell Christabel. She's very busy. Goodness, that woman talks your head off, but at least she's bought something. Christabel, what are you doing? Mother! No, I won't get it back. Even the print is terrible. Why do you waste your time on such awful trash? Because I'm bored, 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 and I hate this hole. You know I hate it. Just sitting here gives me a headache. What gives you headaches is all those trashy novels. Oh, she's paid cash. 
them by. Goodness, she's the silliest woman in Manchester, but she brought good news. Do you know what? Keir Hardy's back for Merthyr. So now there's a Labour man in Parliament again. Well, aren't you pleased? <sighs> Nothing in the outside world means anything to you, does it? Well, Christopher, listen to me. Well, why does it matter? Tell me. Because we need men like K.H. in Parliament. Men who oppose this horrible South African war while the Tories are whipping up their jingo frenzy and sending our best men out there to die. Well, what can he do? One Labour member, the party of one, that's all he is. One man can change the world. Your father believed that. He tried to do it. I suppose that's partly the reason I fell in love with him. He was the staunchest radical in England. What's the matter with you young people? When I was your age, I wanted to... Blow up the whole world and make it new again. Then I'd better learn to be a chemist. <laughs> Why not? You could go to the university, you know. I see they're starting a course of lectures on the arts. And anyone can go, it says, ladies, welcome. So you see? But what do you say? Well, what could I use that for, the arts? For living! You don't know what you can do until you try. Since the war involved me in politics again, I've discovered all sorts of things about myself I never knew before. I mean, when your father was alive, I hardly ever spoke at meetings. But now I have to. And I've discovered that I can. I'm even good at it. Oh, and I do enjoy it. Why? Why do you enjoy it? Well... You should come and listen to me sometime. Then you'd see. I wonder if... We don't do things together anymore as we used to. So as if you're busy. I know. I'm going to ask Keir Hardy to come and open the Pankhurst Memorial Hall. I know he'd do it for me. Perhaps I will go to those lectures at the university. It would be something. Miss Pankhurst? Miss Pankhurst. Oh, you were wonderful. Eva Gorbooth. Is anybody there? Christabel? Oh, there you are. Oh, I say, isn't this awful? Well, they've only given me three months to do it. Oh, I don't mean your things. Don't be a goose. I mean this place. Well, it's better than anything the Labour Party have had here before. Well, I suppose that's something. Poor, poor, poor. Well... I must get on. I can't waste time. Why did you come to see it? You've never been before. I was passing. I've just been to a lecture. You know what? What? I spoke myself. Me, your sister, Christabel Pankhurst. How very brave. Yes, wasn't it? The Vice-Chancellor was talking on the poets and politics and... I can't think what I said, but suddenly I found that I was speaking. And they listened to me, all those people. And do you know what then? No. In his remarks afterwards, the Vice-Chancellor referred to what I had said. He said, as one speaker has well said, it is, after all, the attitude of the mind of the poet. He'd remembered it, and that's not all. Has Mother ever mentioned to you Miss Roper? Yes. Um... She's secretary or something or other, the North of England Society for Women's Suffrage. Something well, she like was that. there as well, and she came up to me afterwards. Someone must have told her who I was. What did she say? And there was someone with her. I can't describe her. Very tall and thin. Terribly short-sighted, and she bends forward all the time trying to see you. With this great mass of golden hair in the nape of her neck. Oh, you were wonderful, she said. Almost breathless. Oh, you were wonderful. Who was she? 
Eva Gore Gould. She's a poet. She's going to change my life completely. She's doing marvelous things, I know. Do you understand? No. No, why should you? It's just... It's just that she's the most incredible, most beautiful and clever, most exciting person I ever saw. Eva Gorbu. Doesn't it sound like magic? I was just taking your mother a cup of tea. She's one of her sick headaches. Oh, shall I take it? Oh, thanks, love. Thanks. Oh, what happened about that job for Tom? Oh, I got it. So there's a good thing. Not that I wanted him to go away, but he didn't much fancy being here when the baby comes, so he'll be well out of it. We're not seeing much of him now. Except for roast beef in Yorkshire for Sunday. Mother, I brought you a cup of tea. Thank you, my dear. Is it very bad? Mm. You do too much, that's it. Is Christabel at home? Christabel. Where is she? Oh, where do you think? Out, of course, with her friends. Eva Gore Booth? Oh, that ghastly affected creature. Christabel talks about her night and day, and on top of that, she has to lecture me on her working women's suffrage. My own daughter, Christabel, of all people, who never showed the slightest interest in politics. Why, I suppose... I suppose the poor, sweet creature thinks that Eva Gore Booth and her dear Miss Roper are the first women ever to claim the right to vote. Well, does she believe that? Of course not, Mother. We could hardly have lived in this family all these years without knowing the case for women's suffrage. Well, then how dare she try to tell me about the problems of working women? Twice a week I'm in that dirty little office registering births and deaths. What does she know of the girls and women who come to me, 14, 13, even 12, for their babies? And the fathers, often their own fathers. Oh, yes. If Christabel or Miss Roper or Miss Gore Booth wants to know how poor women suffer at the hands of men from man-made laws, then let them come with me twice a week to that dirty little office and I'll show them. Then they can preach. Oh, she knew. She knew I was ill today and she went out just the same. You still have me and Adela. And Harry. Harry? What use is Harry? I didn't mean that. Well, what did you mean? Sylvia, what did you mean? You're not suggesting I don't love my children, all my children. Oh, you couldn't be so cruel after all that I've done for you, all that I do. I'm not suggesting that. I'm not suggesting anything. But there are four of us, and only Christabel, who isn't here. That's oh, what I mean. You're trying to bully me, and my head won't stand it. I love you. All of us love you. But it's only her that matters. You know she's your favourite. She always was. And she does nothing. And I try and try, and it makes no difference. Dearest. Yes? Would you fetch my eau de cologne? I think it's up on the dressing table. Sylvia, did you hear? Yes, Mother.
Christabel? You shall speak to them. If I could. Yes, you were wonderful the other night. You have the gift of tongues, I'm sure. No, I can't. Please, Christabel, for me. Come on, love. person who should be speaking to you. She's not here yet. <laughs> Until Miss Roper comes, I'm going to try to tell you... Come on, Come on, I'm going to talk to you about the things we want. I know what she wants. <laughs> A gentleman, a gentleman back there says he knows what I want. I'll give it you an old. Will you? Because I'll tell you what I want. I want a world where women have equal rights with men. My name is Christabel Pankhurst. Now, some of you may have heard of that name before, because my father stood for Parliament as an independent Labour candidate. Yes, yes, yes. Family, there's no inferior role for women. But I've discovered things are very different in the world outside. This world is ruled by men, of men, for men. And we're going to change it. Yes, we're going to change it. And shall I tell you how? Go on, Christabel, give it to her. We're going to change it by getting votes for women. If men must make the laws, then we shall choose those men. Christabel, Miss Roper's here. It doesn't matter. I've started now. Christabel. I thought I heard you. Are you going straight upstairs? I've been waiting. I was. You look flushed. Have you been running? Oh, well, come and talk to me. No. Oh, I've been so dull all evening. Well, tell me. What have you been doing? Have you been? Nothing special. We held a meeting outside Chadwick's Mill for the girls and women as they came out. Hmm. Did it go well? Yes. Yes, I think it did. What would you say if I told you I decided to study law? To study law, darling? Yes, Miss Roper suggested it. It was a point I made this evening about the drafting of suffrage legislation, and she said I ought to study law. Well, I could, I think. Of course, they wouldn't let me practice. But what do you think? I think it's a wonderful idea. And how clever of Miss Roper. Of course, she knows how brilliant your father was. But why shouldn't you practice if you want to? There must be a way. They don't admit women to the bar. Well, they never have before, but we shall make them. But, Mother, that's... But me no buts. There must be a way. I must know someone. Yes, I do, Lord Haldane. He's very keen on women's rights, and he's an old friend. I write to him tomorrow morning, asking him to sponsor your application to be a student at Lincoln's Inn. Lincoln's Inn, of course, you can follow in your father's footsteps. Well, what do you say? Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. I'm very tired. We'll talk about it in the morning. You're so clever. I'm sure I'll do whatever you suggest. Oh, all right. If you're tired. I am, rather. How's your headache? Oh, it's almost gone. Your father could make them disappear smoothing with his fingers. Well, that's what I do for Eva. She has them, too. Yes, well, you know this. unto thee, when all men shall speak well of thee, the words of our Lord. Well, so long as I have the support of the working classes, I am indifferent to the opinions of my opponents. <laughs> now, I didn't know Dr. Pankhurst, but his widow, his most charming widow here beside me, helped to campaign for me in Wakefield. Now, sad to say, even with such advocacy, it was 
failed to win the day. But the Independent Labour Party is growing stronger in the country and in the House. We have our links now with the trades union movement, and one day, sooner perhaps than you may imagine, we shall have not only Labour candidates in Parliament, but a Labour government in power. As chairman of the party, I shall devote myself to that objective, which I commend to you. Thank you. Hello. Are you all right, Mr. Morris? Yes, I think so, love. I should need some more water, pretty soon. Where's the jug? It's under there. Can you find it? I know where to get it. I won't be long. Thanks. Any more tea? I want some water. Oh, it's a club now, this park. Now the hall's done. Men only in club. That's the rules, you see. Men only? But the tap's in there. I'll tell you what, you stay in, I'll fetch it for you. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Them's the rules. It's a club, you see. Chaps wouldn't like it. We are grateful. It was so good of you to deputise. Yes, I'm sorry about Keir Hardy. I'd like to have been here. Mm, nothing seriously wrong, I hope. Well, it's overwork, I think. But he's a strong chap. He'll soon be back in harness. Uh, oh, there's my daughter. I'd love you to meet her. Christabel. I want you to meet Mr. Snowden. Now, this is my daughter, Christabel. How do you do, Miss Bankhurst? How do you do? Have you, um... Have you an interest in politics, like your mother? Yes, a strong one. Tell me, Mr. Snowden, what are your views on votes for women? Simple, Miss Bankhurst. I believe in full adult suffrage votes for all men and all women. I think it's sometimes forgotten that there are still men in England who have no vote. That's a result of basing the franchise upon the occupation of property. Ah, that's not an answer. I want to know if you're in favour of votes for women now on the same terms as men. No, Miss Bankhurst. For the reasons I've given you. To insist on votes for women on the present restricted franchise would split the labour movement, and that's something I'm not prepared to do. In ten years, maybe, I'll give you a different answer. That is exactly the answer I expected. The answer we always get. Jam tomorrow, never today. My father drafted the first woman's franchise bill in 1870, and still women are dying in childbirth and sweatshops from man-made laws. Not my laws. The laws of all men. Do you know how long we've waited? Three generations of women have pleaded for the vote, and nothing is ever done. For my part, I mean to get it. She's right, you know. Well, I'll admit your daughter has a forceful personality. Of course she does. She's mine. She have realised. I don't believe it. I simply can't believe it. It's true, I swear, and that's not all. Would you hear this, Mr. Yes, Bell? when the man came back with the jug, he said that women aren't allowed to join that branch of the Labour Party because of the club. So Tory men can use the club, but not Labour women. They're plainly more terrified of girls than Tories. Oh, it's monstrous. I shall protest to the party in the strongest possible terms. I shall withdraw all my support until this thing is settled. I shall insist... It won't make any difference. Well, what do you mean, it won't make any it difference? It won't, that's all. If the Labour Party wanted the support of women, do you honestly believe they'd behave like that? Well, I think my support is a rather different matter. This building is, after all, Pankhurst Hall. Then you'd better build a Pankhurst Hall for women and keep men out. They say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. That's the only way you'll force them to accept. At the very least, they can't ignore you. Yes, that's true. It is. I'm going to form my own party. Own party? Yes. Why not? 
I'm going to form a party of women only. Christabel's right. If women want something done, we must do the job ourselves. I've always said that. You mean a women's labour party? No, not just labour. Anyone can join. Liberals, even Tories if they wished, but only women. Men would be barred. Oh, of course. Why not? Men have always excluded women. Now, why shouldn't women exclude men? You see? A women's party of our own. We could have a women's parliament. You'd be Prime Minister. And I am Secretary. I'll take the Foreign Office. I've always wanted an excuse to travel. No, stop it, girls. I want to think. Well, what would you do for your women's party? Whatever women wanted. Getting the vote would be the first step. That's why I like what you said to Mr. Snowden. We've waited long enough, patient Griselda's. In future, it must be deeds, not words. And you can help me. We'll all do this together. We'll call a meeting here at the house as soon as possible and decide exactly what we shall do and how. Well, when shall it be? A week today? Just like old times, a meeting at our house. Oh, yes, but better, because now my daughters are grown up and we'll be doing this together, all of us together, won't we? Well, it depends on Eva. I may be busy. She can join us, too. Well, we'll see. Right. Good. Now, have we covered everything? Subscriptions, yes. offices, yes. the provision of maternity benefits? Thank you, Ellen. Of course, the question of wages is very vital to working women. Oh, yes. We shall need to put our view on that if we want their support. Yes. Yeah. Stay, Ellen. Then we shan't have many Tories. Oh. I don't think Mother really expected... <laughs> no, 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 that was my little joke, Mrs Morrissey, about the Tories. After all, we're all Labour supporters here tonight. Now, I agree about the importance of wages, but for all classes of working women, teachers especially, not just because you're with us, Teresa, I think it's infamous that women teachers are paid less than men. Oh, it's the women who work in the factories, in the sweatshops, who suffer the most. You know, when I teach my children about the abolition of slavery, I seem to see their mothers. We freed the slaves, but not the women. Mm -hmm. mm, that's true enough. The slave labour, that's what they are. Ah, but when they have the vote, the government will have to listen to them. How will we be so different from other groups before? Well, I mean, the work of suffrage movements like Lydia Becker. Yes. We're different because we're the first group of women to form our own political party. See, Lydia Becker worked for the vote all her life, but she worked through the men's parties. And I've discovered that men, even in the Labour Party, will never put women and their problems first. I mean, to most of them, women are a kind of servant class. And that's what we'll remain, unless we organise and fight for ourselves. Well, can't you feel the difference? You see, it's not just that men have regarded women as slaves. Women have accepted it. And it's that slave mentality that we're going to smash for good. Oh, yes, just yes, that's splendid. But we are still a party without power. It's only men who have the power to do things. That's the trouble. It's still the same old problem, isn't it? Until you have the vote, you can't withhold it. And if you can't do that, what can you do? You can make trouble. You know how men hate any sort of a scene, especially where women are concerned? Well, now imagine, if some of us went to a political meeting and started an interruption. No, wait. The men would be amazed, but they'd have to listen. We're going to make them listen to us. Young women do today. They're not afraid of anything. And we older ones are going to have to learn to speak up to and shout if necessary. I'm not so sure how many I of us could do such a thing. Oh, look, look. I think there's yes, Christabel. Christabel, come and join us, darling. Well, You're just in time nice. to be included in the list of founder members of the Women's Labour Representation Committee. Mother, you can't. Can't what? Can't use that title. Surely I told you. That's the name Miss Rope has chosen for our organisation of women textile workers. I must have told you. Did you? Well, after all, what's in a name? Teresa, what was the other name we thought of? The Women's Political Union. No. Uh, the Women's Social and Political Union. That's right. I like that better anyhow. It's crisp and clear. The Women's Social and Political Union. What do you think of that? It's very good. Well... If that's the name you've chosen for us, that is what we shall be. Will the secretary make a note? The initial meeting of the Women's Social and Political Union was held 
at the above address on the 10th of October, 1903. Present Mrs. Pankhurst, Mrs. Scott, Miss Sylvia Pankhurst, Mrs. Morrissey, Miss Billington, Mrs. Harker. It was you who made me think of it. Perhaps I should have put your name first. No, we don't want it to look too like a family party. <laughs> but all included. Yes, of course. And Christabel, of course. There. It's done. Girls, are you ready? We must have been late. Coming, Mother. That's good, Ed. It was better that time, wasn't it? Well, it belongs to the two doctors. First babies will take their time. Not too. Sylvia, we're waiting! I'm coming, Mother. Now, on the platform, you had better sit next to me and then the chairman on my right. And when I introduce you to the meeting, darling, did you have to paint your eyebrows? Oh, it's hardly anything. Ah, there you are. How do you take so long as Christopher and I have to make the speeches? <laughs> Poor Ellie. I hope Dr. Bell has everything she needs. I'm going to stay. Stay? With Dr. Bell. But she doesn't need you. She told me. I'm not needed at the hall. I may as well be here, in case. Oh, well, there's no time to argue. If you don't want to come, I wish you told me. I had to make arrangements for Harry and Adler to stay away, and you could have stayed with them. I'm sorry, Mother. Oh, well, never mind. It's done now. Just don't be a nuisance to Dr. Bell, that's all. Sylvia? I'm going to stay. I, I won't be in the way, but if there's anything I could do. Oh, I was just going to sterilize the instruments. A large pan of boiling water, strain like potatoes and bring them back to me with the lid on. Couldn't you do that? Yes, of course. Uh, is, is she going to be all right? Well, it's a long labor. She's a bit old, of course, to be having a first. Tom thought she was past it. That's the trouble. Oh, I see. Well, who knows? We may need you in the end. <laughs> Oh, there's no hurry for those things. We'll be an hour at least. Oh, you poor child. I'd forgotten all about you. Is it... Stillborn. Oh. She's tired. Sit with her a bit. I have to scream. Alan? Oh, Alan, I'm sorry. All that sad work for nothing. If only there was something I could do. I want so much to help, but there's nothing. There never is. You. You were always the one that needed most. Some needed love, and some can do without. You were always the one who had to cuddle in this family. Thanks for staying. We have a saying in our family. To do, to be, to suffer. Words which my husband, the late Dr. Pankhurst, often used to quote. I think we could remember them as the inspiration of this new movement. For surely, this is what we have to resolve, each one of us, here in this hall tonight. To do all that we can to be all that is finest in us, to suffer all that we must in the struggle which lies ahead. For the women of England are awake at last. They are prepared to do something which women have never done before, fight for themselves. We have always fought for men and for our children. Now 
We are prepared to fight for our own human rights and freedom, our political, our social, and our industrial freedom. If we are brave and true, is there a man who will deny us? For women are awakened, ready to do, to be, to suffer, so that in the end, most surely, yes, I am certain, the victory shall be ours. series next Sunday at 11.15.